in the previous video we um, we, we we applied this uh, neural network based uh, trading strategy uh, to the testing data right and then uh, we created this uh, we computed this uh, uh, cumulative um, return curve uh, for the duration of the test data right which is the orange curve here right and uh, uh, the result was actually quite encouraging it was about it was more than five times the money that we started with right and um, uh, it's an actively traded stock. Uh, it's an actively traded uh, uh, strategy. Right? You basically have to recompute your positions every day, and then uh, make your trades. Um, realize, implement your positions um, in the next day before the closing. Uh, before the closing bell, right? Uh, that's an actively traded stock uh, strategy. You, 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 you. It's a, it's a, it's a pretty much rebalanced every day. Yeah, right. You have to sort of. Uh, do this kind of trades pretty much every day, right? And for two years, for two years, for two years and uh, more than three months, right? And then we were doing this kind of comparison with uh, the most passive strategy, right? Which is buy and hold. You pretty much just uh, buy the instrument uh, on the first day of January 2019 and then hold on to it for uh, two years and three months, right? And uh, the return of this buy and hold strategy, the simplest one of them all, right? It's uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's slightly more than like uh, four times the money that you have started with, right? And uh, we sort of did this kind of comparison, and uh, um, my point was that uh, buy and hold is um, is not really a good strategy, right? It's not a really good strategy. And uh, uh, many students didn't agree with me, right? And uh, we had these kind of discussions in the classroom, and uh, uh, again, it's um, uh, my opinion is this. My opinion is this, right? Um, uh, so, so many of the students in the U.S. seems to believe that um, uh, time in the market uh, beats uh, time in the market, right? Uh, I'm not sure where this. Uh, um, some some famous people in the in investment industry must have said that. So lots of people actually uh, really believe that. I I I can understand the appealing of this buy and hold strategy, right? Because uh, it removes uh, pretty much most of the trades, right? If you remove all the trades, then you remove all the wrong trades, right? And in fact, if you make wrong trades, you could. Uh, potentially lose a lot of money, right? So the appealing of this buy and hold strategy is uh, is um, is understandable, right? And I I um I understand why people kind of uh, like this kind of a strategy, right? Uh, but you also have to realize that in the past ten years or fifteen years, uh, the U.S. bond market is actually doing very very well, right? It has been increasing. It has been increasing for for over ten years, I think, right? The overall trend of the market has been increasing for 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 uh, for over ten years, I think, right? Um, but if you look back for long enough time, right? Suppose we move to the monthly chart, right? Maybe not monthly chart. Okay, maybe monthly chart is uh, kind of good enough, I guess. Uh, if you look back enough time. Uh, uh, it hasn't been performing this strong in the past, right? And there is no guarantee that um, the market will not come back down here, right? And even worse, it could be come down here, back here, uh, right before you uh, sort of retire, right? So, so, so there is no guarantee what's going to happen uh, in the future, right? Just because in the past ten or fifteen years. Uh, the U.S. broad market has been doing well. It doesn't mean it's gonna continue to do this well in the future, right? And I was showing you this example from Japan. Right? The Japan's broad market uh, was doing far worse than the U.S. Uh, broad market, right? The broad market index. Um, and another thing that I want to say. Is uh, is um, is uh, is a 
is really not about the uncertainty of the market, right? What I was saying was about the uncertainty of the market. Nobody can guarantee you this kind of trend is going to continue, right? If you look at the, if you are adopting the mean reversion strategy, uh, it's it's very far. The, the broad market is actually already very, very far from its uh, average. So these two lines are actually uh, moving averages, right? It's actually very, very far from the moving average already. So, 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 so if the mean reversion strategy is actually correct, then it's, um, there's a tendency for the broad market to actually come down at some point, right? Maybe not tomorrow, maybe not next year, but at some point it's going to come down. And you don't want to be caught in that downfall, right? You probably want to uh, get out of the market, or if you don't want to short the market, you at least get out of the market before it becomes um, worse, right? Um, but but that's just the expectation, right? That's um, that's your that's that's my speculation about what's going to happen in the future. It may or may not be true, but uh, it's something that we need to sort of consider, right? If you are taking a passive investment strategy like buy and hold. You do need to consider. You do need to consider uh, the life expectancy of normal normal people, right? The reason that we are investing today is that we want to we want to take out those uh, delayed rewards at some point in the future and then uh, spend them, right? So so everyone's uh, life expectancy is kind of finite. You cannot just uh, sort of wait forever uh, for for the market to come back, right? So 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 when we when we when we when when the market comes down when well, when the market comes down if we are not shorting the market we need some kind of mechanism uh, to to convince us to get out of the market before it gets too bad right um, and the second point I will try to make is that uh, even the simplest strategy like two moving averages provide you some kind of guidance about uh, about about timing, right? Let me just uh, uh, say it very straightforward. Timing, right? Timing. Um, uh, but maybe, maybe let's go back to look at the daily chart. Let's look at the daily chart, right? Let's look at the daily chart. So, so these two moving averages. One is the sixty-day moving average. The other one is the one hundred twenty-day moving average. It's not optimal. It's not the optimal value that we have uh, uh, done experiments with, right? But uh, but uh, uh, but uh, I'm just using that to, uh, to to demonstrate my point, right? Um, so so let's let's go back to the big bear market that lasted for like ten years or something, right? Right. So so that's the that's year two thousand. That's the that's the big tech bubble, and then we have a big crash, right? And which lasted for like a very long time, right? For a very long time, right? Um, so, so even the simplest active trading strategy, like these two moving averages, right? It's gonna tell you when to actually get out of the market, right? So, so on this side of the peak, you have the short-term moving average, that's the red curve, above the long-term moving average, which is the blue curve, right? But here you have one cross now. We have the blue, the blue, the short-term moving average has crossed below the blue, uh, the long-term uh, moving average, right? If you are adopting this, um, this, uh, this, uh, this uh, two moving average, very simplistic two moving average trading strategy, it's active, right? It's active. So at this point, at this crossing, you should be getting out of the market, right? You should have been getting out of the market, right? And then it goes on for a couple of uh, years or months, I think a, a few months. The, the short term moving average goes above the long term moving average again. You should get in the market, right? And then lasted for not very many months or days, right? And then crosses back again. At this point, you should get out of the market, right? And then the price just keeps going down, going down, going down, right? You should, be, during all this period of time, you should be getting out of the market. You should be staying out of the market, right? You should be just staying out of the market. For this entire duration, if you are not shorting the market, right? If you are not shorting the market, then at least you should be staying out, right? So do do you see the huge amount of drop in the percentage of the uh, instrument? It dropped more than half I think, during this entire period of time, right? More than half. 
right, from, from its peak. Right? You could take the money to invest in some other instruments, or could take it to invest in, for example, real estate. Right? Right? You don't have to actually tolerate this kind of a sharp drop in such a very long time. For, for such a very very long time right and then it goes back again looks like it's gonna come back right it's gonna it's gonna recover cross back again right? you're getting the market right you're getting to the market but not lasting for very long but you are not losing too much during this very short amount of time right you're not really losing too much right and then crosses back again right cross back again, the market the price goes down again right until it drops to like one third of the peak one fifth, I think it's probably just it's more like one fifth of the peak, and then it starts to recover, right? If you're adopting an active trading strategy, you're getting the market here, right? So this is not really retrospect. This is not really even if even if you are at this point in uh, you are at this point in, in time, these two moving averages, right? Even if you are at this moving at this point in time, right? If you go back in the these two moving averages really tells you uh, something bad is going to happen, right? Um, that's my second point. It's um, even the simplest active trading strategy uh, could save you lots of time and money, right? And uh, we are working on something that's um, that's um, that's much more sophisticated than the two moving averages, right? Based on neural networks. And uh, and I believe it's gonna perform much better than this kind of a very simplistic uh, trading strategy based on moving averages, right? And 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 that's my second point. That's my second point, right? And my third third point is about timing the market, timing the market, right? Not not time in the market, but timing the market, right? Timing the market. So every time when people talk about the timing the market, it seems to be a really bad words, right? Really bad words. Why is that? Why is that? Because pre because timing the market implies some kind of a prediction about the market, right? And people have this kind of inherent fear about making the wrong predictions, and usually people try to convince themselves that uh, trying to predict the market is just entirely uh, futile, right? You should just give up predicting the market. It's uh, it's uh, uh, it's um, it's uh, it's worthless. It's worthless because the market moves in random motions. Right? It's it's purely just random. Uh, it might be true for this kind of day-to-day -day, uh, price fluctuations, or if you look at even shorter uh, intervals, right? For example, minute to minute or uh, hour to hour. This kind of fluctuation it could. It might be random. It might be random, but I'm not exactly convinced it's entirely random, right? In a statistical sense, it's uh, it's got. And today I'm going to show you why I think uh, it's not entirely random. Right? It's not entirely random. Um, but but what exactly about predicting the market? There's a um, uh, depends upon depends upon what you are actually predicting, right? The the market is not just the price movements. Price movement is actually a very important part of the market, but uh, there are some other aspects of the market that's actually quite predictable, right? If again we go back to the go back to the moving averages, right? You can sort of see lots of uh, red uh, green bars and red bars, right? Even during a one year, the price fluctuation could be like huge, right? So so day to day price prediction is indeed very very hard. I'm not denying that it's a very hard problem, right? But 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 just uh, just rule out the predictability of the market um, is not really the right thing to do, right? For example, for example, if I if I tell you that the the direction of the moving averages is actually quite predictable, do you believe that? Do you believe that? Right. So 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 if the short term moving average, which is the uh, uh, red curve, is above the short, uh, the long-term moving average, which is a blue curve, then it means the direction of the market is going up, right? But if it's the opposite, if it's the opposite, for example, um, uh, for, for example, for this time period, for this time period, it's the opposite, right? Right? The the long-term, the long, uh, no, no, it's uh, it's probably during this period of time, right? 
the long-term moving average is above the short-term moving average, right? And in this period of time, the market could be going down, right? The direction of the market, right? Uh, maybe that's not a good example. Maybe I should just go back to the to this p p uh, period of time, right? So, so, so in this period of time, the blue curve, which is the long-term moving average, is above the short-term moving average, right? So, so the market is actually going down. So, so, so by just just looking at the, the 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 values of the two moving averages, you can pretty much tell the direction of the price movement, right? And do you see that the moving average is, is actually much much smoother than the price movement themselves, right? So if you try to do some kind of extrapolation of those smooth moving average curves, uh, I would say the predictability of those moving averages is actually quite high, right? And if you are if the if if the curve, for example, um, Maybe let me just get to the price of today, right? Right. So, so today the red curve is above the blue curve, and I can predict for the next week, for the next opening bell, that's next Monday, I, I'm, I'm, I can re quite reliably predict that the red curve is still going to be above the blue curve next Monday, right? Is that something that's kind of a, quite predictable, right? And if the red curve is above the blue curve, which means what? Which means, in general, this kind of averaged uh, price direction is still going up, right? It's still going up in spite of this recent pullback, right? The average, uh, so sort of this kind of long-term direction of the market is still going up, right? So, so, so it depends upon what exactly you are actually predicting, right? Is it useful to predict the directions of the moving averages? Yes, I think it's very, very useful, right? Maybe it's not as useful as predicting uh, the price movement from day to day, but it provides you very, very critical information about the general direction of the market, right? So it allows you to avoid uh, a very long duration uh, bear market, right? That's what I was showing you. Uh, just a, a few minutes ago, right? So, so, so there are some aspects of the market is actually predictable, and we should try to actually uh, uh, explore that and make the best use of that, right? And uh, maybe this video is kind of too long. I'll make another video to show you, um, to show you even for the day-to-day -day price movement, it's actually has some uh, predictability to it, right? I will try to actually convince you that uh, it's not entirely unpredictable. Uh, it has a statistical imp significance uh, even for, uh, for, for, for predicting day-to-day -day price variations.